Welcome to Star Citizen and the FPS Missions Guide. In this guide, we take an in-depth look at missions on the ground, focusing on those where we need a weapon. We also go into the new loot and sales mechanics, as well as the new loot containers. And of course, we give you some tips and tricks for the fight, which can not only help you with the missions, but can also increase your winnings a lot. Because no matter whether you go into battle alone, with a friend or with the whole group, the ground missions, especially with the possibility of selling looted items that came into the game in 3.17, can be very worthwhile. And as in every guide, you can jump directly to the places that are of interest to you or which you would like to see again, using the timestamps in the video. But first of all, a big thank you to Real, ladies and gentlemen, who made this video possible via their support as Patreons, channel members or Twitch subscribers. Thank you! Sooner or later, beginners in particular will come across appointment missions, a type of story mission that you can accept via your Moby Glass, and there in the Personal tab. These types of missions, unlike most other missions, come with a small story and NPC mission givers set to music. Hello! I'm Constantine Hurston, of the Hurston Dynamics Hurstons, junior outsourcing agent. Your contracting file has been assigned to me. Here are the job requirements. Have a look. After completing these appointment missions, we receive a follow-up mission from the mission giver, like this one from Constantine Hurston, in which we have to retrieve a safe from a nearby bunker. A general tip for bunker missions, the air defense can take direct fire at you. All through, it's a good idea to land a little away from them behind cover, as the defenses will only fire on your ship or a vehicle. And even if they don't see you as a threat at first, this can change quickly in course of a mission. Another tip, with the stationary guns on site, you can take out the air defenses without danger, after which you can later fly your ship directly to the entrance for example, to load up on loot. In the bunker, we then go in search of our safe, which is directly displayed as a mission marker. Tip number 3. If possible, use silence weapons, as the AI enemies here usually react to you too late. And of course, we also find various loot boxes and crates in this first story mission, which are definitely worth taking and selling in order to significantly increase our profit. The entire topic of loot, transport and sale, however, is dealt with in detail in a separate chapter. And with the completion of the first appointment mission, we have already become acquainted with several available mission types by recovering items from a bunker and also eliminating several enemies on site. As the next mission type, we take a look at delivery missions, which we receive from various factions all over Stanton and can be found in the mission manager under delivery. In the beginning, we transport packages from A to B quite peacefully and achieve a rather below average payment. However, with increasing reputation, which we gain through missions, these become increasingly better paid and also riskier, as we again have to penetrate bunker facilities to retrieve packages, where we again encounter armed enemies. And since we often encounter very special NPC defenders here, this also gives us the opportunity to take very special and exclusive loot. So we first go in search of these special crates in the bunker complex, after which we then have to survive waves of enemies in order to leave the bunker again with our crates and perhaps some exclusive loot. And here's an obvious tip, always take the appropriate medical equipment with you on ground missions. You can find details on this in the dedicated medical gameplay guide here in the channel. With our crate secured, we can then also complete this combative delivery mission, which is already one of the better paid ones and depending on your reputation level, brings with an additional bonuses. However, this mission in the Hurston area is the best way to secure the exclusive Artimax armor of the Hurston security forces. We can do this either by fighting the security forces with the crime set 
or we can deactivate the surveillance in advance and then take out the defenders as well as the bad guys. And how you can deactivate the surveillance for a certain area, you will learn in our own Comma Ray Guide, where we introduce you to hacking a security terminal, as well as the necessary items for this. This way, it is possible to get special armor like the Artimax in red or the Heavy Hurston Dynamics armor without a record as a criminal. If monitoring is deactivated in an area, not only you will not receive any entries in your criminal record, but also all players in that area, which means that you can too become a victim of a completely inconsequential attack. And another note, if you are forced to respawn with special armor or items, or even if your ship explodes, there is a little chance of finding your items on the ground. But let's move on to the different types of missions in the Bunker Mission section. In addition to the various security agencies on the main planets, we also find private security companies such as Blackjack Security, Northrock or Eckert Security. These offer different variations, according to which we are supposed to clear a bunker of certain number of enemies, take out a specific individual enemy or support the defenders on the ground. And also special missions such as destroying illegal substances and similar scenarios can be found in the mission offer. We can always choose whether we want to proceed alone and as quiet as possible or even storm into the bunkers in a group with everything that explodes. Currently the enemy AI offers little challenge in most cases, but it does happen from time to time that we are surprised by enemies which can often lead to quick hits or a respawn. In general, however, the ground battles currently offer very few challenges for more experienced FPS players. Alternatively, it is of course also possible to attack various bunkers without a mission, and the crime set is of course certain here if we have not deactivated the surveillance beforehand. The loot system already offers a very extensive portfolio of various equipment and items that we can find, especially for crates and containers. In addition, we find the mountain of equipment and weapons in eliminated enemies or guards, whereby a single bunker round is already absolutely sufficient to supply us with equipment for weeks. With a bit of luck, we can also pick up more lucrative sales material. All through weapons and armor usually only fetch about half their actual value when sold. A tip for looting, if you are exhausted all the possibilities for transporting your characters, get rid of the collected material in your ship by storing it there. This way you can transport a whole bunker in most ships. It is also a good idea to use a multi-tool with the tractor beam to load, say, all the loot containers collected into your ship. Here you can then effectively transfer them one by one into the ship's inventory, whereby you should make sure to transport the looted ones out of the ship again, as fallen enemies still have an active crime stat and can continue to attract the attention of defense systems. In a group and with an appropriately large ship, we can very quickly empty some bunkers completely and fill our inventory significantly with saleable items. Here, several 100,000 Alpha USC in sales values can be achieved in about an hour. Especially, as it is of course also a lot of fun to clear the bunkers with a few friends. As a rough guide, long weapons usually sell for between 1000 and 1500 Alpha UEC and undersuits between 500 and 1000. Armor is also in this range. Direct sales materials, such as hedonite or other regular trade materials, which we can find in the containers, are particularly lucrative. We can sell them at various shops but it is advisable to first transfer the items to our local inventory so that we can then sell them at the console. 
And a small note, Solarit armor from security forces has no sale value at the shop so far, but is it all the more sought after by fellow players. Another new feature of 3.17 is the possibility to use portable containers for shopping and collecting, which have an own inventory value of 125,000 micro SEU, which is a sufficient size for some equipment. Here we have 0.125 SU portable in hand, so to speak. And with a purchase price of just under 1200 SU, these containers are highly recommended and belong in every standard equipment for a shopping or loot tour. You can buy these containers directly at the cargo decks of space stations or in various shops throughout Stanton. However, they are limited in size, making large armor or weapons simply too bulky to fit in a container. However, they offer us the option of taking a complete set of equipment with us, whereby we can directly help ourselves to it and access it. With the new loot and inventory system, and of course, with the help of the containers, there are many new opportunities to generate lucrative profits through the various ground missions, since we can no longer just use the loot ourselves, but also sell it. And in addition, the loot possibilities also extend to subscriber items and very rare items that can be found exclusively. We are very excited to see what else we will find. I say goodbye, until next time, see you soon and as always, see you in the verse.